All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Anna, this is Danny, and this is Courtney. Our presentation is called We Scream for Ice Cream. Today, we're going to do a presentation on the area and volume of a small, soft serve vanilla cone from Dairy Queen. The story began with a 10 cent sale of a then unnamed product on August 4, 1938, in Can Kanakee, Illinois. A father and a son partnership in Green River, Illinois had been experimenting with a soft frozen dairy product for some time. They contacted Sherb Noble, a good friend of theirs and customer, who agreed to run the all you can eat trial sale at his walk in ice cream store. Within two hours, he dished out more than 1,600 servings of this new dessert. With only 100 stores in 1947, it grew to um, 1,446 in 1950, and then to 2,600 in 1955. Today, DQ is one of the largest fast food systems in the world, with more than 6,000 restaurants in the U.S., Canada, and 18 other countries. Some highlights of, D of DQ include, in 1940, the first DQ store opens in Joliet, Illinois. In 1958, food was brought to Dairy Queen. In 1973, if you said the word scrum deliunctious, you could get a peanut butter parfait for 49 cents. In 1989, DQ ranked America's number one treat chain. And then in 2005, the record is broken on June 21st when a new world's largest blizzard treat is built in Springfield, Massachusetts. It weighed 8,224.85 pounds and is 22 feet tall. Okay, so then some history of just vanilla ice cream. It traces way back to uh, the 4th century BC. There was early references to a Roman Empire named Nero. Um, he would like request ice from off of the top of the mountains and then start to mix it with like sweeter things. And also the name ice cream came from like, I don't know, it was iced cream, like kind of iced tea based off of that. Um, the first ice cream parlor opened in New York City in 1776, and that picture on the bottom shows kids eating ice cream right outside that parlor. That was a very popular thing back then, because it was new. And another interesting fact is George Washington and Thomas Jefferson served it to their guests in the White House, and they served pretty good things, so that was a big thing back then. All right, so we're going to talk about what, um, our DQ soft serve small vanilla cone. Uh, it is typically five ounces, comes in vanilla and chocolate, typically is 230 calories, total fat, seven grams. And we are going to find the area and volume of this figure. Yeah, like we said, <laughs> we're going to develop an estimated volume of the cone. We don't know the curve, so it's just an estimate. So we're going to find the area using left, right, and midpoint Ryman sums, and then the volume we're going to use the this method. Uh, so to start out, we um, placed the cone on the x-axis, putting half and half. We kind of made this area right here so it's almost symmetrical figure, and we placed it so that we could get the top half to get all of our points. And we ended up doing it in um, centimeters, but we did it in half centimeter increments so we could get a very close estimate of our figure. Um, now, kind of what the definition of the Raymond sums. Raymond sum is an approximation of the area of a region under a curve. The sum is calculated by dividing the region up into shapes that together form a region that is similar to the region being measured. Then calculated the area for each of these shapes. And finally, adding up all of these small shapes together. This approach can be used to find a numerical approximation for a definite integral even if the fundamental theorem of calculus does not make it easy to find a closed form solution. The methods of Raymond's summation are approached with the partitions of equal size. The interval AB is therefore divided into sub-intervals. <coughs> the left Raymond sum approximates the function by its value of the left endpoint. It amounts to an overestimate if the, if the function is mostly decreasing and an underestimate if the function is increasing. The right Raymond sum does an approximation using the right point. This method is an underestimate for the function if it is decreasing and an overestimate if it is increasing. Lastly, the midpoint is an approximation of the function at the midpoint of intervals. Also, we did not use the trapezoidal, which is the fourth one, but if we did, it is the same as taking the average of the left and the right sums together. 
So here's our work as we did the left frame and some. Um, as you can see, we like match up with the left corners and it's a little bit of an overestimate right there. Um, we got this one to be 38.6 centimeters squared after we did the width and length of each sub interval. And so yeah, that was a lot. And then here's our work with the right one. Um, as you can see in some areas an over approximation, some of it's a little bit under. Um, when we added it all up, it ended up being 35.6 centimeters squared and we saw that was an underestimate. Okay, then we did midpoint. We did a midpoint with six subintervals and then eight. And we did the eight just to be a little more accurate because the more you have, the more accurate it's going to be. Um, so as you can see here, this was uh, overestimate the 38 centimeters squared, and they were so close, that one was 37.8, so just 0 0.2 centimeters off they were. Um, but we knew from using the right and the left that it would be somewhere in between because it was an over and an underestimate. And then by using these, we can kind of get, you know, a picture of what it is going to be, and it's going to be close to 38 centimeters squared. So then we find, found the volume of this cone with the disk method. Um, the definition is it's a means of calculating the volume of a solid of revolution when integrating along the x-axis. Um, it is also known as disk integration, and it's pretty much a stack of like infinite disks, so kind of like our cross section. And this is the equation with no hole. If it had a hole, we would use the washer method. And this is how we set up for our disk method. So we use the top half, we end up rotating on the x-axis. So then we would end up times in that whole value by pi to get our full volume of the cone, our estimated value. Okay, and then here's our work. We um, use the disk method for each Raymond sum. And uh, as you can see, here's the, the right, the left, and then the two mid. And so yeah, we just multiplied it by pi and did the interval 0 to 11.5. As you can see, it ranges from 55.92 to uh, 60.63, so we know that some of the bonds will be in that value. So as Danny mentioned earlier, a little bit of the history and what the Raymond sums is, it was named after a German mathematician. His name was Bernard Raymond. And so this is just a branch of integral calculus of how you can figure out the area of some things. And then a little history in the disk method, it's also known as disk integration we stated before. Um, it's a branch of integral calculus. It was first documented in the ancient Greek astronomer Eudoxus, further developed by Archimedes with par parabolas, and then they wanted to start doing three-dimensional figures, so Isaac Newton furthered further the research. Um, and then our estimated value of a standardized cone, uh, we averaged all the uh, ones we integrated and we came up with 58.91 centimeters cubed their approximation for the volume of this cone. And then the three of us decided to do like a little extra activity because we thought like you always get five ounces of ice cream in your small vanilla cone. We wanted to know the variation of how the different employees actually fill their cones. Like is it over or under? Like what are you getting? So we went, <coughs> the three of us, I went to Dairy Queen. Unfortunately we couldn't get multiple employees to do it because they were really busy that day at work. But we had Danny do five of them. <laughs> <laughs> and we weighed them all after, so like they're here. And as you can see, she was kind of consistent. They're all over five, so I guess <laughs> you're going to Danny, you're getting your money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always <laughs> And you can kind of notice just by looking at the shape, um, we did have some videos where we took a look at like technique and um, it's always standard <coughs> five ounces, and as you can see, sometimes it's a little higher, wider, or just the way they're dispensing it. And we figured out Danny's average, hers was about 5.6 ounces per cone. <laughs> job amount. Yeah, we wish we could have got other employees too, but. Um, yeah, and uh, Dairy Queen, every like 0.5 ounces uh, you go over, you waste like $1,000 a year. So I'm wasting <laughs> oh. them a lot of money by going over, but it pleases you guys, so that's one to know. We won't tell. We won't tell. <laughs> Um, this is the graph of the results. Um, it's just from 5.1 ounces to 5.8, and you can see how much I do vary. And so, yeah, even if I vary this much, you know, imagine other employees, you know, other 
ways they do it, so it's kind of interesting. And these are some of the causes for the weight differences. Temperature can be different on the machine depending on the day and how it's running. Um, speed of disposal, um, the time and how much time they do to fill it up. Technique, and you can, you can probably tell by the way she fills it up or any other worker, they all fill it up a little differently. Elle has a little curly thing at the top, but like there's always that little difference and then it depends on the employee and how they normally um, dispense their vanilla cones. And this is what we covered. <laughs> so yeah, we just gave you a brief history of Dairy Queen and ice cream in general. And then we showed you some cross section of the small soft serve cone from Dairy Queen with rhyming songs and the disc method. Um, and then yeah, we like looked at the accuracy of how much a five ounce small cone actually can. And that's our presentation. If you have any questions. <laughs>